Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, this is the summary for the day of 772 for the, to 773 for the 5th to the 6th of April. We start off with the Frontline Changes Report. Uh, the first one is over at Turney. So uh, in the Crimea front, Crimea City, and uh, there is a Frontline Change over at Turney region. This is actually a joint location of uh, Ukrainian uh, forces trying to recover an uh, abandoned Russian tank. Uh, they are joint located here where previously there was a Russian attack coming in this direction. So uh, with this joint location, uh, it means that uh, the Ukra there is Ukrainian presence over here. So we are going to extend this uh, overlapping uh, map mapping uh, around here. It wouldn't be classified as a Ukrainian capture because uh, I don't think they will stay around. So that's all for this uh, criminal front attorney. The next front line change is over at the Bakhmut front. Over at the Novi, at Novi or the Canal Micro District of Chasif, yeah, there is Ukrainian forces geo located on the northeastern part of Novi, Novoye or Novi. And uh, this geo location shows that the Russians probably did not have this location, uh, but it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't really invalidate if the Russians are actually in the forest. So there is going to be some slight uh, inv invalidation of the Russian claims, but uh, it's not a full invalidation of the Russian claims. So that's all over at the Chastifia region. And then the next frontline change is over at the Atiyevka front uh, at Bedaichi. So uh, at Bedaichi, Ukrainian mapping have shown that the Russian forces have taken most of northern basically the entire of northern badaichi as well as central badaichi show uh, which means that the russian forces have uh, now confirmed to have taken most of badaichi leaving only the western part of badaichi still under question uh likely that the, this western part is oh and also here now this western part is likely to, to be a gray zone largely except for i think uh, this area here i think is still probably there is ukrainian forces uh stationed over there because it's a bit far from the front line so we will continue to monitor uh there is geolocation location as well uh, over in the northern part uh geolocated located russian forces getting hit by a ukrainian fpv drone which we task uh the reason probably the reason why the ukrainian mapping considered this entire area to the russian uh, russian side in their mapping so after badaichi we go down a bit over to semenivka so Semenivka, there is your location of Russian forces advancing within Semenivka itself. So the Russian forces is now geolocated around here, which extends their front line over in the southern part of Semenivka as they continue to push northward to capture the entire of Semenivka. And as you can see, the Russians are pushing in Bedaichi and then they are in uh, pushing in Semenivka. So this is definitely going to squeeze the Ukrainians quite a bit around this uh, northern or rather the slightly northern part of the Adyevka front. So after Semenevka, uh, we have at Tonenke. So uh, at Tonenke, there is a geo location, uh, which also is verified by the Ukrainian mapping, showing that the Russian forces confirmed to have taken uh, these three lines or this junction of the three lines. This is actually uh, uh, basically a disclaim by the Ukrainian mapping, but of course this is now confirmed purely because of geolocation so they have no choice but to acknowledge this frontline change and um, the next frontline change is away from the ADFK front over at the Donetsk front at Krasnohorivka so this is Krasnohorivka and uh, if you zoom out a bit you're going to see Donetsk city Marinka so this is where Krasnohorivka is and uh, in this area there is this massive geolocation this important geolocation of Ukrainian forces scanning shelled by Russian artillery at the very corner uh, of of the city and which means that the Ukrainians have actually fully retaken the entire of Krasnohorivka which means that the battle of Krasnohorivka has tentatively ended uh, with a Ukrainian victory so the Ukrainian forces have successfully pushed out the Russian forces that previously was uh, have entrenched themselves uh, in this uh, northern uh, not northern southern part of Krasnohorivka, but the the Ukrainian counter attack has been successful eventually. So now Ukrainian forces have taken the rest of the the this uh, foothold, which means that the Russians will have to try again another day. So this is a uh, you no know, 
one of these uh, rare success in recent days where the Russians are advancing everywhere. But this is not the only one. So uh, anyway, uh, over at Novo Mihailivka, further south from uh, Marinka. So just now we were here at uh, Krasnohorivka. So now we're going to Novo, Novo Mihailivka. At this area here, however, the Russians are advancing. We have two Joe locations, one in the northern part in the Dacha region or the holiday house re region. And then another one through the center of Novo Mihailivka. Both Joe location uh, shows the Russian forces are advancing uh, in, within this area in the northern and the central part. So the Ukrainian forces are now struggling to hold positions around here. And I think that uh, the Russians will continue to push to capture Novo Mihailivka. So and, uh, the next front line change is over at Staro Mayoske. Also at the Donetsk run, but at the other end, uh, Ukrainian forces based on uh, based on the Ukrainian claim from a uh, Ukrainian mapping, uh, they mapped that the Ukrainian forces have taken back these two three lines. So not not two three lines, but as in uh, two three lines. Uh, so the the Ukrainian forces have taken uh, have attacked counter attack and uh, pushed out the Russian forces allegedly according to the Ukrainian mapping. Uh, which means that the front line has changed to this. However, this is a Ukrainian claim, so we, it will be uh, remain as a uh, overlapping mapping uh, on the DPA's mapping. And the last front line change is over at Verbove. So uh, this is uh, at the Zaporizhia front. This is Zaporizhia city. This is the Zaporizhia front at the uh, northwestern part of Verbove. Uh, Russian forces have taken some ground uh, in this area here. This is a Based on the Ukrainian mapping, uh, they have shown that the Russians have advanced over this area here. Uh, but generally, this has already been mapped as so by the Russian mapping. So it's not going to change anything uh, much, but just redu redu a reduction of the Ukrainian uh, mapping, the front line on the Ukrainian side. So that's all for all the front line changes report we go into the strategic and tactical reporting first thing first the russian forces have launched a massive missile strike on this is reported on the 6th of april according to the russian defense ministry this time round, they are hitting industrial complex uh, military industrial complex and uh and temporary deploy deployment areas for foreign missionaries so i'm not sure if this uh, is referring to any nato troops because there is some rumors that french troops has already been deployed maybe not so we're not sure so anyway this this is a foreign mercenary they didn't they, they didn't write it as nato troops so we we'll just assume that it's purely mercenary the U ukrainians did not also lay like lay down dying uh, lay down and did nothing on the 5th of april uh, probably on the very same day as the russian strike uh there is a massive ukrainian drone strike on a russian airfield uh, based on the Russian claims, they have shot down basically all the drones, almost all the drones. And uh, however, there is still rumors of some injury uh, caused by this attack. There is claims that uh, mul multiple Russian jets has been destroyed. However, even ISW, uh, the super pro Ukrainian uh, think tank, uh, the Inst Inst Institute of Study of War, also claims that uh, there is no evidence that any Russian jet has been destroyed based on satellite imagery evidence. So uh, the entire claim has been shot down. Uh, I have, I basically missed the entire uh, excitement about that. I saw it on Twitter and I, have no, I don't know what to think. And then uh, within half a day or a day later, uh, basically satellite imagery have came out to debunk uh, the rumor of the destroyed jet. So it is what it is uh going into the Kherson front at the Kherson front there is still fighting uh at the uh left bank or the southern bank of the Dnipro river uh according to Raiba they said that the Russian uh, Russian forces attack Ukrainian uh, boats uh while they are trying to do some rotation at Krinky and a uh, Ukrainian uh, side also reported about uh Russians trying to attack their beachhead so yeah, probably this. The, there is also Russian reports of shelling at Ivanivka. And uh, there is Joe location of Russian airstrike at Ohivka. So that's about it, I believe, for the uh, Kherson front. We move into the Zaporizhia front. At the Zaporizhia front, as mentioned just now over in the frontline changes report, the Russian forces are attacking in the northwestern part of Verbove. Let me slow down my mouse. 
Okay, that might be a bit too slow. But uh, the Russians are also attacking at Robotine. So this is the usual, uh, probably some more like a fire attack than assault uh, from the Russian side at Robotine. We will continue to monitor. Uh, this front line has been rather static. Uh, the only real, real front line change is coming from the south, uh, northwest of Verbove. So that's all. Uh, coming from the Orikhiv sector of the Zaporizhia front. There's nothing else over at the rest of the Zaporizhia front line. Over at the uh, Velika Novosilka sector of the Donetsk front, the uh, Russian forces are reportedly attacking uh, Staro Mayoske and Uruzaini. Ukrainian forces counterattack as per the front line changes report on the western part of Staro Mayoske. So this is the basically the strate strategic picture of the situation over the past 24 hours. Uh, Joe location of Russian airstrike on the southern southern part of Uruzaini along the tree line simply shows the Russians have a uh, free reign in terms of air power. So it's basically on this tree line. So so this is currently the case. Uh, the Russians, these attacks, these arrows are not attacks. It's very positional. They are basically just simply firing at Ukrainian positions from afar. Uh, whereas the Ukrainian uh, counter attack over on the western part of Staromayovsky is the one that actually make front line change. So moving on to, over to the Voleda sector, uh, there is multiple geolocation of uh, Russian uh, artillery strike or drone strikes or or missile strikes on Ukrainian positions. Uh, one, so a mortar attack over the southwestern part of Voleda. I think that's, this is an airstrike on uh, the mine near Voleda and then also another airstrike on Ukrainian stronghold on the eastern part of Voleda. So basically, it's just the Russians conducting a, a fire attack on Ukrainian positions and are trying to weaken the Ukrainian defense line around this very very powerful and um, fortified Ukrainian uh, Ukrainian defense line. The, this line is very very difficult for the Russians to break. They have tried before. They tried tank rush, but it also didn't work. So that's all from this uh, Voleda or Voleda sector. Over at this uh, Marinka sector, Russian forces are attacking over at uh, Krasnohorivka, Georgievka, uh, in the Boyeda region towards Antonivka and uh, towards Konstantinivka as well as uh, through Novo Mihailivka. As per mentioned, so this is a strategic picture over, overall at this area here. Uh, over at Novo Mihailivka, as I mentioned before, Russian forces are attacking in the north and through the center. Previously, they have already succeeded taken, taking most of the south and moving southwest uh, in the western direction towards the highway south of Konstantinivka. So this will probably continue. Ukrainian forces is likely to struggle to hold positions around this area here. Um, but they will continue to try because uh, the Ukrainians at this front lines are usually pretty good. Uh, pretty good at grinding out and uh, and are uh, trying to you know cause make it very expensive for the Russians to actually achieve anything. Uh, there's interesting reports coming from the Russian Defense Ministry and Ukrainian Defense Ministry. Both talk about the Russian advance in this direction. So the Russians say that it's more towards Konstantinivka. The Ukrainians say it's more towards Ant Antonivka. So either one. No, it basically it's just a, this general direction that the Russians are pushing from Boybeda. So we will continue to monitor and see how this uh, goes. Uh, further up north, uh, Russian forces continue at Georgievka. There is no news about this. The Russian forces allegedly is attacking Krasnohorivka. However, the one that makes frontline change is the Ukrainians. So we shall see how this progress. But the battle of Krasnohorivka is now over for now. Uh, now we shall see when the Russians is try going to try again for round two. So that's all from the Donetsk front. At the DFK front, uh, the Russian forces continue their DFK offensive, continue to put massive heavy pressure on the Ukrainians with fighting reported towards Novo Kalinove uh, at Bedaichi at Semenivka towards Umanske in the region uh, on the western part of Tonenke towards Yanosbrodivka yes, and, uh, and uh, towards uh, Netelove as well as Povomaiske and Nevelske basically you can see it's almost the entire front line that the Russians are pushing Ukrainian forces are they counter-attacking in any places? No, uh, the entire initiative at this area here is entirely Russian. The Russians have the full initiative of the Adyavka front. And uh, in this area, we are we are also seeing that indeed that they are having the full initiative with frontline changes reported. Uh, in Semenivka, 
and Badaichi. So this these are all very firm changes. Uh, power uh corroborated by geo uh, geolocations and uh, Ukrainian forces are geolocated at Umanske with an airstrike uh, hitting this bridge uh, this this bridge over here this is unlikely to you know to to stop the Ukrainians but it definitely make it extremely inconvenient for the Ukrainians to move south of the river from Umanske region uh, to support the defense of uh, yes yes no Brodivka, as well as defending the southern part and the southwestern part or southeastern part of Umanski. so this is now uh, made more difficult um the, otherwise this there's its entire river system uh, moving through oh, the south of Umanski towards yasno yasno so we the this bridge is pretty strategically important the russians decided that they just want to airstrike it which means that there's a possibility that the russians are not intending to go north of umanski they may want to just def build the defense line like this along the river and probably uh, ending at netelove with the russians probably making this as a final objective so the so along this river the russians can build a strong defense line and uh and then this will be the next static front line and uh, this is probably a good enough buffer zone to protect the adfk city and then the, the 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 continuation of the offensive will probably go from the north through semenivka towards the rear position uh towards the next uh line of defense for the uh on the ukrainian side so yeah this looks like the case this looks like the case uh russians uh, russian uh, strategy like to fight to water uh, water bodies because they prefer to you know, defend along rivers and lakes and something like this so that is looking like the case with the destruction of the bridge moving into moving away from this front line over the new york front there is only one report of russian attack in the new york region according to the russian defense ministry on the 6th of april's report and uh, that's all for this front line we move into the southern flank of the Bakhmut front russian forces doing their usual uh, we're fighting reporter at klishievka and Drievka, as well as in the area of zelenopilia uh, zelenopilia is a very uh, unusual place to be named uh, ukrainian defense ministry mentioned it uh, in their 5th of april report usually they mention kodyomivka but this time around they mentioned zelenopilia which is kind of weird which means that there is a more more bigger focus on the southern part of Andreevka, which is why Zelenopilia, Zelenopilia is actually mentioned probably in the you know in the two 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 prone attack you know from two different directions towards the same point uh probably on the western part of Andreevka. uh moving into the northern flank of the Bakhmut front this is Bakhmut city by the way uh, russian forces are attacking Bodenivka. Uh, attacking Novi in the area of Ivaniske and towards Stuposhki in the forest region west of Ivaniske. These reports are coming from the Russian sources and uh, there is multiple geolocations all around Novi region as this is now the next uh, a focus of all the war fans watching uh, the Ukraine war. Uh, Russian forces geolocated along the road confirming the Russian presence in this area here uh, which is not doubted uh the U however the ukrainian presence around here joe located shows that the russian claims is a bit a little bit exaggerated for now but you uh, ukrainians are getting bombarded and are uh, airstrike all of, all over nove so this seems to be the new meta for the russians offensive which means that they will always airstrike and uh, shell you and uh thermobaric miss rocket you to the point of submission and redrawal and uh, or until your troops do not dare to reinforce to that position this seems to be that kind of a uh, strategy right now with the russian having full air superiority so we will continue to monitor and see how this uh, progress and uh, i i saw some of the comments on the on on the on the dpa's shots on the ukraine war and i saw maybe new viewers that they have never known what is dpa and then they are saying that no i'm talking nonsense or whatnot they are nice cope nice cope <laughs> yeah don't don't watch too much propaganda you know um ukrainians are not winning like like there is no you can't even sugarcoat it no nato is talking about trying to uh, intervene uh to stop the russians from winning there is a 
articles write, read, writing about, you know, if the NATO troops don't enter, then Ukraine will have no choice but to suffer a catastrophic defeat. It's like, how is that not Russian winning? You know, don't cope so much, you know. Uh, I know even if you, you, re you read ISW, like, even ISW cannot say Ukraine is winning right now. Like, there is no way to sugarcoat this. So anyway, at the civil front, uh, Russian forces are also winning in this area here. Uh, if you are, you know, anyway, the fight, Russian forces attacking at Bilohorivka towards Okanyamske in the area of Sperne, in the south of Ivano Darivka, in the in the air, northwest of uh, northeast of Vesele, towards Vimka, and the Ukrainian forces counterattack at Rosdolivka. So, looks like that is rather pointless. Uh, when the, everything is collapsing all around at this front line, uh, Ukrainian forces are kind of like, oh, this is the more important place. So, yeah, but it's okay. It's okay. They At least they are trying. So that's all for this uh, Sivas front. Uh, very interesting situation coming out. I'm not, to, we is really need to see it. I think, as I mentioned before, uh, Vimka is the one that is probably more critical. If the Russians are not pushing no, not pushing in this uh, Rosdolivka region, then Vimka will be vital. If the Russians take Vimka, then Ukrainian forces will be stranded all along this front line and they will have to redraw. And this is also why the Russians are pushing it at even uh, Vakan Okanyamsky because this will add on the pressure because what this look like is actually a wider pincer. And uh, these troops over here is going to be stranded. If these two attacks will be successful. But of course, there is no indication that the Vakam Okayamske is a serious attack. Uh, so uh, this is only reported by the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. The Russian side did not really talk about it much. So we will continue to monitor. This This uh, attack is on reported on the 6th of April, which is the past 24 hours. So this is pretty new. Um, moving into the criminal front, uh, Russia's, Russia continue to attack Terni. Uh, Ukrainian Joe located, you no. Know, trying to extract a Russian abandoned tank and that's about it. Uh, we move on. To, uh, as straight away front, the surprise attack ended. Uh, so the previous reports about the Russian attack at uh, Raihoroka, Zerone, uh, uh, Zerone as well as uh, Andreevka is not repeated. So this is just a probing or a diversionary. So that's all for the straight away front. Over at this Kupian's front. Uh, there is report of fighting reported at Berestove uh, and Sinkivka. Both are Russian attacks. There is no Ukrainian attacks being reported uh, in this area here. So that's it for the Kupian's front. And uh, over at the border regions, at the border regions, uh, Russian forces continue to bombard Ukrainian uh, positions. Uh, multi many of them is through Lancet. So over in the area of Voschans, there is a Lancet attacking a uh, Ukrainian vehicle. And then we have another one, uh, another Lancet hitting a Ukrainian artillery just east of Lipsy. So, and then there's one more. Yeah, okay, there's one more which I want to talk a bit more. So this, this is, these two are Lancet attacks. And then we have this one within uh, Kharkiv in the northern part of Kharkiv region. Uh, this is actually this actually went viral uh, on the uh, Russian side of the social media that covering the Ukraine war. Uh, it is the destruction of two Ur uh, Urugan uh, MLRS, uh, multiple launch rocket system of the Ukrainian armed forces. Uh, they were supposedly inside some kind of a residential area and uh, they were hit by a missile strike. Uh, the, the explosion is massive. As you can see, super huge explosion because I think there is a uh, this multiple launch rocket system are uh, is full of ammo, and uh, so the destruction basically killed everyone there, hundred percent. I don't think anyone will survive that explosion. So this, uh, according to the Russians' uh, narrative on the pro-Russian side, they say that uh, this these two MRIS is the culprit for the the non-stop shelling of Belgorod. So the Russians are celebrating this. But however, if you zoom in, this is not exact, exactly some kind of residential area. Uh, this is a huge mall. Uh, this is the mall's car park. And then the residential area is a bit far. Uh, so to say this is residential area is 
a little bit stretching it uh but um uh, this is indeed still uh a huge victory uh on the russian uh, side in terms of their pr no no the kind of mental psychological uh jerk uh jerking you know then um they say that you no know, this these two are the ones that uh, have been shelling belgorod so which might be true so anyway uh this is the summary for the day of uh 772 to 773 for the 5th to the 6th of april do press the like button or miss out strike it you know just like the uru guns that was a uh, miss out strike and uh so and, and uh join the dpa army subscribe to this channel uh, and also, if you want to support DPA's work, if you think that my work uh, is useful or important, do consider you know uh, sharing some of your income to with me uh, on Patreon. Uh, I will highly appreciate it uh, because uh, the patrons are the one that provide me a cushion uh, in the face of extremely unpredictable YouTube. Um, uh, recommendations of DPA's videos. Uh, the videos just went go. The views just go all over the place, and um and usually it's on the low side. So it's important that uh if you guys can uh, support DPA, uh financially provide me with that cushion. That will be very very helpful. Uh, but the 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 the, the amount is dropping uh, over the past uh, half a year. It's been slowly dropping. So you no, know, that's why I need to you know uh, do some advertising for the Patreon so that you no. Know, yeah anyway uh do 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 uh consider that i will post i'm going to post some video uh no some photos of uh history legend oh, i'm going to use history legend to you know <laughs> get money uh history legend in singapore with me and i'm going to post some of these photos uh on the patreon and in the next post and i uh, thank you for watching and i'll see you guys in the next update yeah i'm, I'm actually monetizing history legend right now <laughs>